Hi guys, welcome to the African Joe channel. Today I am reacting to the greatest comedian to come out of Africa. Uh, so proud of this. <laughs> so proud of this guy, man. Um, when I moved to America, I've watched a lot of Trevor Noah's material uh, so that I can like know what to expect when you get here. So yeah, thank you so much, Trevor. You did you did me a solid uh without you i don't know if i would have made it out out here uh you know so kudos to you trevor i'm a big fan i'm a big fan of trevor noah uh almost made it to his last daily show thing but transport was a problem for me anyway let's see what is this all about back from atlanta it was uh, 107 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, hottest weather. The worst thing is everyone comes up to me and they go, well, you, you must be used to this being from Africa. And I'm, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm from Africa, but that shit is hot. That was just, no. Yeah, I guess maybe there are other African countries that get that hot. Uh, yeah, I, I always thought it was so cold here, but then I learned the hard way. So hot, you have to drink a lot of water. Uh, like in Botswana you can just be even like just hide under a tree or something but here the air is just hot everything gets hot during the summer and then it gets super cold oh. anyway. I was scared to go jogging because I thought if I ran out in the street and fainted wouldn't the local news love that I'd be running and I'd fall down in the heat. They would have their vans reporting live. They'd be standing there going, so hot in Atlanta, even Africans are fainting. Uh. Oh. So I'm enjoying this. I like the accent. It's really too. happy to be here, you know. This is, uh, this is going to be good for us, I, I hope. I say I hope because I never know with stand-up comedy. It's just, you know, it's, a, it's just an awkward experience, I find. I'm always nervous. I find comedy is very similar to sex for me. Um, well, it's exactly like sex when you think about it. With me, the comedian, playing the role of the man, and you, the audience, the role of the woman. Because it's my job to satisfy you. And you just have to sit there. <laughs> and then, just like sex, my success or failure will somehow be determined by how much noise you make during my performance. <laughs> Which makes it a one-sided affair, I feel, you know? It's, yeah, I mean, maybe you're the quiet type. <laughs> I, I hope we have magic tonight. I hope we create something wonderful. I mean, for many of us, it's our first time together, and that means it might be awkward. I understand this. <laughs> and if that's the case, I want you to know that I'll look into your eyes, I'll see that I'm freaking you out, and I'll stop. <laughs> I'll stop. And I'll flip you back over and we'll go back to the simple stuff. Okay. Man, the glow. I've, uh, I've been in America for a few months now and I'm, I'm really just thrown by the place. It's uh, not what I expected at all. Uh, different from the brochures and the pamphlets. Uh, there's many assumptions I had about America before I came here and I've come to learn that those were wrong. For one, I just assumed people spoke English here. Um, <laughs> far from it uh, this one I thought it was a joke but then when you get here and even up to today I've been here for three four years now still hard for me to understand a lot of people and it's also really hard for them to understand me so it's really really difficult to communicate uh, with my normal accent and I find that I sometimes change my accent just to accommodate people, whoever I'm talking to, because it's really, really, people are struggling to hear me, and I'm also struggling to hear them. It's funny. It's not, you know what, it's not so much the language, so much as the pronunciation of words that throws me off. It's just what Americans have done with the language. You guys have just, wow, you've just, you've done something. You've put 22s on the English <laughs> language. You've got rims that just pimp my language. That's what you've gone with, you know? I don't understand. I was chatting to this woman downtown the other day. She came up to me and she wanted me to see something. I don't know what though. She was like, oh my God, look over there. I said, look over what? She's like, over there. Look at that her. And I said, her? She's like, no, her, her. <laughs> There's two of them. 
I understand nothing. Even the small words, just the pronunciation. Yeah. You know, small things that get you by. Uh, for instance, I pronounce the opposites of uncle as aunt. I say my aunt. Mm -hmm. Out here you say my aunt, which to me is an insect, <laughs> which made me look like an ass when my friend told me his aunt died. And I was like, so what? There's tons of those out there. What a great way to end a friendship. <laughs> I couldn't get help the other day when searching for a battery for my remote control. Because oh that's what I say, battery, a small form of power. Yes, in America, you say battery, mm. which to me is a different form of power. <laughs> Sponsored by Chris Brown. The <laughs> And you know what, I understand. We live on different sides of the globe, so it's fine. The language will evolve. This is something I've, I've come to understand. But I, I hope I change one thing in your hearts forever. Just one thing. And that is that animal in the wild that looks like a horse. It has <laughs> black and white stripes. Yeah, do me a favor. From now on, please, it's not zebra, okay? It's zebra. Yeah? Yeah, that Just one. like it's not debra, it's debra. <laughs> Same structure of word. Plus, you cannot name them because you do not have them. <laughs> Zebra. This is madness. Everything out here is different. Do you know how hard it is to learn when you come out here? You have to change everything. There's a measurement system. You have to learn. You have to. That's. It's true. Like you have to learn everything. Like forget about what you know and like be open to learn new things. Because you think, oh, I speak English. It's gonna be fine. I'm moving to an English-speaking country, but it's so different. It's so different. I can't imagine also Americans going to like English-speaking countries elsewhere. They're also struggling. Like you understand, but the accent just throws you off. Which is just, I mean, America, you guys have your own thing, the imperial system, you know? On my side of the world, we use the metric system, and by my side, I mean the rest of the world, you know? <laughs> We have the metric system, which is, amongst other things, very efficient. It's a very simple process. You know, everything goes into each other. And out here, you have imperial, which is fine. I mean, I won't judge you. If you want to be imaginary, that's up to you. <laughs> but I just feel like there's some consistency that's needed. Small things, like, for instance, uh, when we abbreviate our small measurement, milligrams, we use MG, milligrams, MG, milligrams. Yeah, yeah. And you guys have, uh, have ounces, ounces, which you then abbreviate OZ. There's no Z in the word, ounces. <laughs> I don't know. That, that's pale in comparison to what you've done with pounds. That for me, <laughs> please explain to me how the abbreviation for pounds became LBS. <laughs> LB, pounds. I look like the idiot walking into the store going, could I please have the two labs bag of sugar? <laughs> I was like, you mean pounds? I said, I don't see the P, no, I don't. <laughs> So, well, it means pounds. It's not LBS. A lot of bullshit. That's what it stands for. <laughs> this is horrible. In fact, it's, it's, it's crazy. You do realize the imperial system is so inefficient that even American drug dealers have switched over to metric. <laughs> even drug dealers got to the point where they said, we need some order. We're going with metric. And I, I thought, I honestly thought this was an anomaly. I thought, you know what, this is just one of those things, it's a coincidence, but it's not. Americans do not care about abbreviation nor the English language. They, they just, they don't give a damn. I learned this in the small things. Like, uh, like, for instance, when I was in Tennessee, I stumbled on an organization known as the Ku Klux Klan. You heard of them? Worst magic show ever. Guy gave me a pamphlet, he was like, come and see the Grand Wizard. Grand Wizard, the Grand Wizard. Didn't do one trick. <laughs> not even one trick. I mean, I noticed a few black people disappear, but I mean, that's not magic. <laughs> no, that's just Reaganomics. I wasn't impressed by that. So, like, I, I used to not understand this because I watched this so many times. I used to not understand what is Trevor talking about here. But if you are in Africa and you don't know what is Trevor, now, they cake. Ku Klux Klan is a KKK. I think a lot of people know about this, but you cannot assume. Uh, I didn't. It's a racist organization, pretty much. They hate black people. They hate everything to do with 
the color of your skin if you are black it's it doesn't matter if you are a good person bad person whatever as long as you are black then no you are you are you are not welcome so that's what he's talking about there. Like, where's the magic? I sat there forever. These guys running around in their sheets. Yeah! The, guy, the KKK, as they're affectionately known. <laughs> Has nobody bothered to tell them ever that you do not spell clan with a K? <laughs> nobody, nobody stopped. Even in America, clan is spelt with a C. <laughs> the Ku Klux Klan, they're the KKC, not the KKK. You realize that? Ku Klux Klan. C. In fact, the name is wrong, the whole thing, the Ku Klux parts of it. That's, that's just horrible because they, they got that, as you know, from ancient Greece. It was Ku Klux Alpheon, meaning a circle of brothers. And that's how they got their name. They call themselves a Greek circle of brothers, which is, which is wrong for two reasons. One, if your sole purpose as an organization is to hate black people, don't you find it strange that you've now named yourself the circle of brothers? <laughs> And secondly, do they realize that in ancient Greece, circles of brothers were doing very different things <laughs> with one another? Very loving, very, you know, yeah. If they were really a Greek circle, the sheets would be a bit higher up, you know, just more of a, yeah, It'd be one more hole. They're not a... Hey guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to my channel so you can win. Yo, that was Trevor Noah. Uh, yeah, man, to look at these videos. The guy has achieved so much and uh, I've got nothing but love for Trevor. And this comedy uh, set is actually super educational. For it, like if you are planning to come to America, you just watch Trevor Noah's comedy, uh, stand-up comedy. You will learn a lot about America because he's been saying this uh, in a funny way, but it's actually true uh, what you will encounter when you come to america so yeah thank you so much for watching this video please hit the subscribe button and uh this is the lighter side of the african joe so i'll see you guys on the other side bye